your story? What's your sign? It's like we're twin flames in a different life. Deep connection, lights a spark. It's like you know me in the depths of my heart. We're dreamers. We were ready for some much needed beach time and our first stop heading north towards Tuwal was this beautiful spot. And we came across this moody little guy whilst we were beachcombing. I've never seen them that up front and aggressive. Are you cranky little fella? Whoa! <laughs> what are you doing man? Calm down! We were met by a local family who gifted us coconuts and even showed Brendan how to cut them. Yeah. <laughs> Your knife is a very sharp. <laughs> what do we do with this one? I've already drilled it. Drink it. Drink it. You got a big straw? Chuck a straw in it, put the lime in the coconut and drink the bowl up. A little bit of, uh, what, vodka in there or? That's gonna be perfect. On the way to our next anchorage, the kids spotted some dolphins off the bow. Using OpenCPN, Brendan found this great little spot to tuck into for the night. We're just making our way now to a place called uh, Palau Wurtap Island, which friends of ours, uh, Dave and Kathy on Wild Ones, told us was a, uh, a really spectacular spot. Yeah, can't wait to get this little spot. It's actually Sarah's 40th birthday tomorrow, so we're gonna uh, drop the pick here and probably dig our heels in for a couple of days and just kick back and relax after the last, you know, six months of just running away from storms and floods and massive winds. As we were anchoring in Wotap, yeah, yeah, yeah. this cheeky fisherman tied up to Excelsior and came aboard. He was pretty friendly though, and desperately wanted a selfie, but the boys also hooked him up with some fishing gear. Very good, very good. <laughs> Mother Nature served up a birthday treat for me when this pod of dolphins visited. They even looked up at the drone as Brendan flew overhead. It was great to watch them casually cruise around Excelsior and I managed to take these snaps of them performing. Happy birthday to you. 102. 102, not quite. How cool is this place? We're out at Wotap Island. And we found this little beach here. And now that it's low tide, we've sort of got it to ourselves. No one can come in here. We can't get out, but no one can come in. No hello, mister. That is driving us insane. Honestly, every 20 minutes, there's a boat at the back of ours. They bash straight into our yacht. They climb up, they just walk straight up into the cockpit. Hello, mister, hello, mister. They're really friendly, they're lovely, but they're just, there's no, obviously no boundaries in, their, in this culture here because they just, they just walk straight on up, come into the boat and have a big old chin wag. And I just, I, I, I don't want to get angry because I don't want to upset them and so I'm trying to be patient and then I'll try to be really polite and they see that as like a <laughs> you're welcome to stay <laughs> it's just it's a it's a bit of a nightmare but anyway we've got this little beach to ourselves so there's no hello misters and it's absolutely gorgeous it's a hell of a way to spend Sarah's 40th birthday cheers to 40 cheers to 40 the big 4 -0. I still feel 20 <laughs> you don't look a day over 22 you bitch <laughs>
They're all hermit crabs. And, and you can hear the, the whole rock or the whole beach or mountain sounds like it's alive. Thousands and thousands and thousands of them. So cool. Charlie's has built a little hermit crab hut. There's so many. You've trapped him. Let him out. No, they're not trapped. They came in. Tra oh, you've given them a chip, chip have you? Yeah. Oh, that's really nice of you. I don't know that hermit crabs eat chips. They were. This one was holding onto it with dear life. It takes one salt off. Really? Yeah. Is that right? This place. As far as um, <clears throat> as far as sailing goes, it can be an absolute nightmare trying to dodge these fishing nets and the fads. And most of the time, the fishers out here, what they'll do is they'll they'll at the start of their fishing net, they'll have this massive flag with flashing lights and shit on it, and and then you sort of have to avoid going between the flag and their boat. But sometimes the boat is the lead of the fishing line and then the flags at the back so you just you can't always tell so that, and then they're throwing hand signals at me flat out and I don't know what they mean so we just sort of wing it but from what I've noticed so far every 10 to 20 meters they have a fad um all these like big homemade timber crates almost and I'm, I'm assuming they're floats or I don't really know but you see them every 20 meters between the flag and the boat so whether the flag's at the front of the boat or behind the boat you don't really know, but sometimes the net can be like literally a kilometre long. So sailing wise, trying to avoid these things is, is really tricky. And when we came around the back of um, Sulu Island, oh, there was just, there would have been close to a hundred of these boats spread out over like 10 square kilometres and their fishing lines are ten, like a kilometre long. So it um, gave me a little bit of anxiety trying to dodge these things and trying to sail is a nightmare. And the flip side of that is, you know, if we drop the sails and we motor, we've got folding props. Then my props are out, so there's a, a higher risk that I'll get tangled up in a net. So, yeah, whether you sail or motor through them, I, I think you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. But how easy is it to row without the uh, engine Stop down? Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> what did I row that time? Like two kilometres with the engine down? What an idiot! I was so angry. That I ran out of fuel. Brody was like, I told you so, Dad. I told you so, Dad. And like every two minutes that I forgot to lift the engine. <laughs> Once Brendan had rowed us safely past the reef, it was time to explore, and we found this cool limestone cave. What do you reckon, ladies? Yeah, how cool is that? Give it 10 chuckers. 10 chuckers. Oh, this water is so nice. Next, it was time to go for a snorkel and check out the reef. It was pretty hungry work, so we headed home to Excelsior to enjoy a yummy roast lamb lunch. It's a masterpiece. It's a shame to eat it, but I'm gonna. You're a masterpiece. <laughs> You're drunk. <laughs> How good is it? Thank you, my beautiful family, for such a memorable birthday. Welcome to all our new subscribers. Stay tuned as we explore further next time.